The greatest oak was once a little nut who held its ground. And I want you to be those little nuts that turn into the greatest of oaks. How do you do that? 10 to 15 minutes a day. Every day we study these charts and practice to show ourselves approved here at Charting Wealth. Nothing we do here is complicated, super complicated. It's just not, but it takes time and energy and practice to get good at these charts. That's what it takes. Nobody can do it for you. You're going to have to practice this yourself over and over, but it's only 10 to 15 minutes a day. Come on. You can do this. You can do it. Let's jump into these charts. You're not purchased our book. Want to support the work we do here at the channel. Books are available. 12th printing, autographed copy waiting for you. If you happen to live overseas, I've got some overseas orders to fill tonight. Please don't hesitate to email us, cw at chartingwealth.com. We'll send you a PayPal invoice for some reason. Square does not allow us to clear overseas, but if you're in the States, follow the link in the show notes. I'd like to welcome all of our new Patreon members. Thank you for your support. Let's jump into these charts. What do we see happening on the S&P 500? We see the blue Price percent oscillator pulling away from the red signal line down for the day 0.43%. We see a green open, uh, sorry, a green solid candle. What does that mean? That means down movement still, but some hesitation in that. That's what that's showing. So not a green up box candle, but again, it's showing us some caution and continued down movement. That's on the Heikinashi candlesticks, and again, we can see how far things plumbed down on the long, long wick on the bottom of last week's odd candle. Haven't gotten anywhere near that. It's probably the reason we have that green solid box, even though it was a down day starting off derivative oscillator. Those gaining downward momentum, like we said, price percent oscillator plumbing down. That's good to see. We go to the two-day chart. And we have a green open box candle with a long wick on the top. Again, just the first day. It is a down day, but that's something to pay attention to. Price percent oscillator, however, is still heading down. Derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum. So again, we have the weekly and the two-day in confirmed down moves. Go to the four-hour chart. What do we see there? It is hitting about the same spot for the last day and a half. We see that the price percent oscillator has lost a lot of its energy. Derivative oscillator still going up. Let's see as the week goes on. Maybe we'll have a bounce off on either the weekly or the two-day trend line. That four-hour chart will cross over going down and will give us a chance to jump into a practice trade going down. SH would be what we would practice trade. SH is the inverse of the S&P 500. That's what we would practice trade on a down trade. It moves in the opposite direction. So when the S&P goes up, SH goes down. When the S&P goes down, SH goes up. So we'll keep an eye on the charts, particularly that four-hour chart as we go throughout the week and see if it gives us a jumping in point. Let's move on to the Qs. We'll start off, as always, on the weekly. What do we see going on there? Well, we're starting off with sort of a doji. Down for the day, 0.30%, but that weekly candle right there on the weekly trend line looks like it's above the two-day trend line. We do see that the price percent oscillator is still going down. Derivative oscillator is about flat. We go to the two-day chart. What do we see there? Losing a little bit of downward momentum on the price percent oscillator, still almost flat, maybe heading down a little bit. But again, we see a green open box candle forming. Hasn't pushed through as far as the candlestick itself goes through the weekly chart, but has popped up above the two-day. Now again, still in a confirmed down move. We're not going to redraw the trend line. We don't have a crossover yet, and maybe we won't, but we'll continue to watch, see what there is to see. What do we see as far as the four hour goes? Again, moving higher, did pierce the weekly and pushed through in the morning on the two day, but again, has not penetrated the weekly at this time. Like we said, down 0.30% for the day. So we'll keep our eye on if we do have a crossover sometime this week before that two day crosses over going up. If that four hour crosses over going down, then of course, 
We'll look to jump into <coughs> a practice down trade on QQQ. What is the chart to practice? PSQ. That's the single short of the NASDAQ 100. So again, if things bottom out, starts to move up, then of course PSQ will move up when the Q's moves down. It's the inverse fund. If you haven't taken that training we have at the website on inverse funds about crashing markets and how to handle them, please go take that. You'll learn how to practice trade inverse funds uh, and why they're important for practice trading for your total understanding. Okay, let's move from the Q's back to the weekly and we're going to leave stocks and go to bonds. Bonds down pretty decent for the day, uh, almost as much as gold, 0.83%. Now, what do we see happening? Because we've been laminated here for going on, you know, two, two weeks now. It looks like the price percent oscillator is trying to pull away from the red signal line, at least for the first day of the week. We do see a green up candle, derivative oscillators gaining downward momentum. And the price percent oscillator is below the red signal line, which is a good sign. Now, again, remember, we had a crossover all the way back on the week ending the 27th of September. As we go into the second week of October, you would think things might be a little different. It's sort of weird. I will admit it. What do we see on that two-day chart? Well, the price percent oscillators flipped over to green. I'm sorry, derivative oscillators flipped over to green. Price percent oscillators still negative, but awfully close. We can see that as far as the two-day chart goes, the first day of this latest two-day candle is right up there where the prior candle was that ended Friday, representing both Thursday and Friday. So we'll see what happens with that still negative for the time being. And what about the four-hour chart? Ooh, that's where we see red down candles because again was down for the day and we see the price percent oscillator heading down derivative oscillator losing down we have a crossover going down that will give us an opportunity to jump into an inverse fund on bonds we might we might very well have that happen and if that happens of course we're going to want to practice trade t b f that is the short for the 20-year government treasuries it will go up as the underlying ETF, that is 20-year bonds, go down. So again, we'll watch, wait, and see if that opportunity presents itself with a four-hour crossover. We'll see. Keep your eye on the prize. Hopefully we can jump into a practice trade on TBF before the week is out. We'll see. What about gold? And again, looking at gold on <clears throat> the weekly chart, we see a green, solid green candle forming. Again, we've seen a couple of those in the last three weeks. After gold topped out back on the week ending the 30th of August, was it the 30th of August or did it actually made it higher the week ending the 6th of September? And then we sort of started this sideways, downward, somewhat slide. We do see the price percent oscillator pulling away from the red signal line, derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum. We go to the two-day chart. We see that we have a red spinning top, means indecision, tending down, price percent oscillator heading down, derivative oscillator losing a little bit of downward momentum. Continue to keep our eye on that, see how that candle finishes out on Tuesday. And we look at the four-hour chart, and again, it's heading down. Is it going to cross over going down and give us an opportunity to jump into a down move on gold? Maybe. We'll wait and see just what gold presents to us. So we've got a lot of things. These four-hour charts are critical for this week. Keep an eye on the S&P 500 four-hour chart on the NASDAQ 100 four-hour chart, particularly on TLT's four-hour chart, and on gold. Can everything go down at the same time? Probably not. So we'll wait and see how things shake out. Folks, that's where we are. As we end the day on Monday, hope you are in the saddle. 10 to 15 minutes a day is all we ask. Practice trade, practice trade, practice trade. Keep doing this. You can do it. God bless my friends. All the best from Charting Wealth World Headquarters.